Hello everyone, MasterZeon1001 here, and in this box cutter update video, I wanted to talk about some of the more recent things that have come to this latest update of box cutter. I was actually preparing this update to be released around my birthday to be kind of a uh, birthday event. However, even late, still great. Uh, there's a couple of new additions in addition to a lot of bug fixes and additional supports being added. The environment that you're seeing was made using hard ops and box cutter and this plug-in cable raider made by Sergey, who's uh, one of our number number one testers who's always pointing out bugs and is just vigilant with helping us keep the, keep our products in line so i plan to be doing content talking about it down the road however the main additions to this release is the new intersect type which actually breaks my rule of not putting in uh, major features in a small update however for this one since it is a special occasion intersect was just overdue and it's just an additional mode that's just another piece of the puzzle. Uh, also notable is improvements in PowerLink support. We support PowerLink, which is a plugin made by Bond7, one of our operatives, and um, the creator of our radial array, which I'm such a big fan of. Also, UV Project support was done by him on the initial implementation, with it being expanded on by proxy and now added to the sort panel of this latest update, meaning that if you're using UV Project workflows, you'll be able to continue cutting and your UV Project modifier will also continue to be sorted. There's also been fixes to ensure that knife doesn't adjust your auto smooth, which was a bit of an irritation. I'm glad that was pointed out. Orphan data was also another thing where edit mode usage of box cutter would gradually make your computer slower. We've taken some steps to actually make that not happen. So that way you can keep your performance. Performance is the main game and bug fixing for me when it comes to box cutter. So whenever it comes to the majority of the work that's being done with it. For me, it's about stability, ensuring that things work in 2.83, 2.90, and 2.91, and that everyone gets a good out-of-box experience without any sort of issues or setbacks, except for those who forget to select the object they intend to cut. So without further ado, let's get into it. Self.cut had a small accident that resulted in it being fixed. So I'll start off with box cutter just using just box and we'll switch over to custom. But with the object selected, I'll press C to make this the custom cutter. And we'll just draw our shape on here repeatedly until we just start taking away. The thing about self cutting is since the object itself is a cutter, if you cut away too much, you end up taking away the cutter that you hope to use. So. It is kind of an art, but it's also a fun little exercise I like to do to just test the limits of booleans and box cutter and just seeing how to get some really fast complexity as you see here. I'm happy to announce that self cut has been fixed for box cutter 716 underscore 11. So interestingly, in conjunction with hard ops, you could take a shape like this and just press Q O T and convert it into a box, right? which will just put a box around it. And then under the box cutter settings, you can actually turn on behavior and turn on active only, which will make it where whenever you cut something, only the active objects being cut, but it's aligned to the secondary. So we'll take this object and convert it to a wireframe, wrong wireframe. We actually want to shade it as wire and we'll select the outside box and then select the inside. And we'll just switch over to circle and using control, we have our snapping dots because snapping is on and we also have the dots showing up for a center face, edge, and vertice corner. And we'll just bring out our circle and bring this down. So this is just our regular red cut. However, we also can press X to change this to a slice. And new to this version, you can press X and change it over to an intersect. You can also press H to hide the object in case you want to hide it and actually see what's going on underneath. And then we can just click and apply. And this is our shape. We can get rid of this box. We no longer need it. But with this shape, we can actually use something like, say, the mirror multi-tool, maybe press X to reset it to modifier, and we can just shift click the back, shift click the side, and just mirror this and create a quick little interesting object. In common tradition, we'll close this file without saving. And with our box here, we can just press Alt W, start box cutter, and just start doing some cuts. I'm just pressing space bar to just finish the cut whenever I get it far enough. And I'll just draw a box 
and this time we'll press X to toggle it to slice and press X to toggle it over to intersect and we'll just keep just this area. And one of the more interesting behaviors I found in conjunction with this tool is recut, which recut is a slice modification behavior that can be brought up with Alt X during slice. So here we are cutting through using a red box, but if we press X, we can change it over to a slice. And if we press Alt X, we can do what's called a recut. And recut allows for some rather interesting combinations of just cutting out shapes and having them integrate with their predecessors while also allowing you to extend further into the time stream to grab pieces that didn't actually exist or that don't, no longer exist at this moment in time due to them being cut out. So we'll do it again right here. We're just cutting with red. We'll press E to extrude. And I can just press X to change to yellow, press Alt X to change to recut, and now we're basically cutting back what we lost from this box. And with this piece, of course, I can just switch over to box and continue doing my work on it. But I just wanted to show that there's some potential for fun with recut inside of box cutter as well. So if you're not familiar with it, just know that you can use it inside of slice by pressing Alt X. There's also a toggle for it at the top bar. Uh, for example, if I were to change this over to slice, you can see that recut is an option. And now the next move that I do will be a recut. Recut is one of those more unique tools that we only let you have it on once, meaning that the next time you perform a slice, in fact, we'll switch over to box for speed. It will actually just be general old slice. So we'll change this back to cut and continue just working this shape. And I just wanted to show some interesting possibilities with intersect and recut and hopefully um, users can find some as well. But this was just one of the many examples I found with recut that I found was um, excellent for intersect. If you are experimenting with the UV project modifier that was added in hard ops this last release to create procedural textures and UVs, it is now supported inside of hard ops and box cutter. In fact, to bring it up, um, general clicking it will just set up the UV project modifier, but shift clicking it will actually set you up with the grid material on the model. So this means whenever I jump over to render mode, I can actually see what the render result is going to be. And now if you go into box cutter, and you begin working, you can actually see the modifier update and keep its UVs without them breaking. And this just is a really nice way to work. I've been using it a lot. I plan to come back and do more content uh, going in depth about the UV project modifier and why we have it the way it is. But for now, just know that we are working on improving it to make the experience as solid as possible for users who are wanting to experiment with working in such a fashion. When it comes to box cutter and its current capabilities with information conveyance, I always felt that they could be lacking. And so I sought to improve it in hard ops first with the notification system that when you run an operation, it provides some feedback and information on what has happened. So if we were to just draw a box, you may not be able to tell that I'm drawing. I mean, you can tell on screen that I'm drawing, but as far as information feedback, only in the bottom left corner of the screen where this blue box that says extruding is, is the only sort of information conveyance that's providing feedback on what's going on. In the top right corner, you can see the logo has changed to a box cutter logo and it's red, indicating I am performing a red cut that's currently active. If I cancel it, you can see that it goes back to being hard ops, meaning that I'm currently in hard ops. So if you're ever wondering what operations I'm using, the logo itself will change to indicate what is going on. However, the information conveyance of box cutter is always something I felt was lacking and I felt that we can improve that through hops and I want to improve the information conveyance of multiple other tools as well in addition to box cutter, but box cutter is just a test. Um, I'm always racking my mind on how we can have notifications popping up for kit ops to make kit ops even more useful. So if you're using the latest version of hard ops and you enable box cutter assistive notifications, now, whenever you draw a box, you'll see that there's dimension information being displayed. Whenever you extrude, it now displays the extrude information. And if you were to tab and press X, it'll let you know that you've changed your mode to slice, to intersect, to inset. In fact, let's change this to cut and we'll perform a slice just across. I know weird. We'll press Alt X to activate recut. And let's try that again. We'll draw this and bring it across and we'll press tab. And we'll press X to switch to slice. 
We'll press Alt X to jump to recut and we see that, that information is there. However, I do feel that there needs to be a bit of a priority system where the extrusion information maybe isn't overriding the information on recut and status change, but that's just me. I'm perpetually thinking of how we can better perfect these notifications before we begin working on the UI system itself of box cutter. If anything, you should look at the notification system of hops as just us extending our use to help box cutter. In fact, there's many tools inside of HardOps that's built to extend into BoxCutter via the HardOps BoxCutter connection. For example, if I select everything and we press Alt-M and just control click blank material to give everything a unique material, whenever I perform a cut, actually let's select the right shape, it's important to select the right shape when performing a cut or you'll get undesirable results. We'll perform a slice, but I'll press M in order to change the material to another material. And we see that notification text appears for that as well. So I am determined to make box cutter as informative as possible before we even begin dealing with the internal UI of box cutter itself. For now, we are still in the stage of addressing performance and capabilities and ensuring that the tool is at its best and fastest. And even this update has done many things to ensure that things are just a little bit faster than before. Edit mode is always one of those things that people always ask us about because edit mode is one of those things that shouldn't actually be possible. And the best way to describe it is that edit mode is actually an emulation of object mode. So we'll perform that cut again. It appeared that laser cut just went nuts. I believe that it may be interpreting the final version and that's what's causing that to happen. But when it comes to edit mode, edit mode is actually object mode being sent to edit mode. So it's almost like a second layer whenever this is being used. You would expect to go into edit mode and use this as a direct tool, but we just don't have access to Blender like that. Someday we hope to improve such a system. However, edit mode is basically kind of an experiment in how far we can get away with transferring data and sending it places and replacing things. But things have been done this update to make things even faster with edit mode. However, I do recommend that you approach it with the um, frame of mind that it is an emulation of what is going on in object mode because that's the only way you could cut, slice, extract, and do everything just like you would in object mode, but with the power of edit mode. But I just wanted to do a segment just talking about some of the improvements with the notifications and our plans with them going forward. Um, I've had the team work with this stuff belligerently. Um, no one wanted to go in and, and make this sort of stuff possible, but I felt that the pieces existed and now seeing dimensions on screen and seeing extrusion amount, I'm hoping there's a person out there who is desperately wanting just a little bit more information. Who's just kind of picking up on what I'm putting down as far as tools displaying a little bit more information, a little bit more statistics to provide awareness as far as what's going on in the user experience. But with that, I'll wrap up this video. I'm just sitting here just drifting out, cutting a cube, and I'll see you guys next time.